Welcome back to 1UP's user training level 1, beginner. Today we're going to talk about transition in 1UP's. We're going to take the, dis the assembly that we created in the design and get it ready for launch and deployment in multiple what's called environments. An environment in 1UP's defines kind of the runtime scenario on where your assembly is going to run in terms of aspects such as security, reliability, scalability and availability. So it in a nutshell determines how and where to deploy and run your assemblies, platforms and components. So let's go and create an environment. You will see that we can choose a name such as dev test QA or whatever, we'll set up the admin status, we'll worry about DNS, availability mode and which clouds to use. Our design for Pete's Pet Store is complete and we change over to the transition by either clicking transition up here or in the navigation on the left. We can see now in transition that there are no environments defined so we're going to create some. I will simply click on new environment and select a QA environment for now and now I can go about providing the details. In a nutshell I only have to provide a name so let's call this the QA develop environment. I'm setting it to administrative status active. This is just a flag and then I see my DNS subdomain is automatically created and I can set the availability mode. For this development environment I will just set it to a single which means I'll get a single VM for each platform which is good enough for my test and development environments and I will use this cloud as a primary cloud for all my usage. I could have multiple clouds here as well but in this organization only one cloud is available since it's only a test environment. As soon as the environment is created the design is pulled from the design of the assembly straight into this environment where I can then inspect it. Just like in design, in transition I can also review the changes that I have pulled from my design and then commit them and in this case committing would also trigger a deployment. So a simple review would show me here all the changes which is the complete design all the changes we've performed in the previous releases and we see that again in timeline here. With a commit and deploy I am proceeding to get this plan for an environment to be executed which happens by creating what's called a deployment plan. The deployment plan details all the work necessary to actualize the design and transition configuration into, an, into a real running deployment that we can later then work with in operation which is our next phase. We can inspect this here, we see all the various different setups, so for example here one compute is going to be created because we set single uh, as a redundancy mode, there's going to be one operating system, one Java, one Tomcat and so on and one war. We can kick this deployment plan off to actually execute and we can now watch it here proceeding or we can close it and watch it here. The availability mode that we saw before can be either set up to be single or redundant. If it is set to redundant, which should be your default deployment choice for any production kind of operation, uh, multiple computes are created for each platform and load balancing is set up to get the requests routed so you will achieve highly available services. When you then combine that with multiple clouds you can get really highly available deployments happening where even if a complete cloud goes offline so like a data center outage or something like that um, your application would still be running. 
which clouds you choose depends on what's available for you as a cloud in for you and your organization in terms of capacity, what kind of latency you get out of that, what operating system uh, availability is like in terms of, for example, needing Windows versus uh, CentOS, Linux, or some other operating systems in the nodes on that cloud. But pretty much that determines your cloud's choices. So let's go and create another environment that uses a redundant setup. Back in the transition view for Pete's Pet Store, we just add another environment, another QA environment, and we call this our prod deployment. Again, we're setting it to active as a flag, and this time we're setting it to availability mode redundant. And we're still choosing the same cloud because that's the one we have available. Again, it pulled all the changes from the design and we can proceed and commit and deploy this prod environment which uses redundance. Looking at the deployment plan now, we can see that two computes are created and then respectively two Java's are installed, two operating systems and so on. Again, we proceed with deployment and will follow up once it's done. Now that both of the environments we created, we can have a look at the details, in especially checking out the configuration as well, a bit of the summary information, and then dig into the platform and all its components and see how they manifest in transition. Looking at our two environments, the dev and the prod environment here in our Pete's Pet Store, assembly, we can see now that both of them have the deployments completed and the releases are closed. So everything should be up and running and we can inspect those in more detail. We can do that by simply clicking on them and then having a look at what's going on. As uh, information here in the overview summary, we can see the status. We can see that the deployment is complete and all the information about it. And we can even dive into the specific uh, platforms as well as the components of those platforms and see how they are operating. The configuration for a specific environment here shows us the things that we configured when we originally created it here, like our administrative status, the availability mode, as well as the clouds being configured. We can also inspect the variables and relays or notifications that are configured for this and potentially add a new one, as well as have a look at the timeline as it relates to this specific de development environment here. F last but not least, we can also perform a search in which it would be reacting with only results that are found within this environment, within this specific environment assembly. So we've done an initial deployment and we'll check this out shortly when we look at the operation side of things. But what happens if we make another design change or we make a configuration change on the actual transition? Well, we'll have to pull that design change into the specific environment and then run another commit and deploy cycle where we again can inspect the changes, have a look at the deployment plan, review it, and actually deploy it so that the plan gets executed and the changes become manifested within the operation of this specific environment. And you can do that individually for each environment. So let's have a look at that. As an example, we're going to try and move our dev environment to use OpenJDK instead of Oracle JDK. So what we're going to do is we navigate to the environment, find the Java component and change its configuration. So we go to edit, change it to OpenJDK. And now what we're going to do is we lock it so that this OpenJDK setting as it is done and performed specifically on this environment does not get overwritten by any design changes at a later stage. So we'll save this. And as soon as I've done the saving, you see that again, I can review it and I can commit and deploy this change and then see how it works out in actually running in operation. 
you see the deployment really is just a change of Java. We are going to perform this and view the results in operation shortly. Once we're happy with this change and it works in development, we can go back to the design phase and potentially change it there and then roll it out to all our environments, which again gets us back to operation, which is what we're going to cover in our next module. So let's quickly recap what transition is all about. In transition, you create environments which allow you to map the design that you created in initially or for your assembly to the operational requirements. You can have multiple of those operational situations configured, multiple environments that differ. You can have varying availability, for example. You can choose different cloud providers. So you can use your assembly design for multiple requirements. You can use it for your development changes to figure out specific changes on the design by overriding them in an environment, testing them out. You can then farm them out to a QA environment where you already have the redundancy set up that you would not have set up in your dev environment, but it's much closer to what you have in production. You can then verify those changes there and then ultimately you can bring it out to a production environment, which is even more highly available by using multiple clouds and redundant setup and so on. Once you have your environment configured as you like, a simple version controlled change, just like from the design to transition, kicks off the operation with a commit and deploy. You go through a deployment plan, you can review it and you can see the status of it and ultimately end up with your assembly running in operation. Thank you.